Welcome to Politics Done Right on KCFP. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Give me a call at 713-526-5738. That is 713-526-KPFT. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four. Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show one more time. We are going to have a wonderful show today, my friends. You better believe it. Yes, we have. Listen, how was your weekend, my dear? My week's been going pretty well. I mean, it's been a mighty hot one, but I know. we're surviving the end of summer. And we're going to do this together. But you know, yes, we are. And you know what is so interesting about surviving this summer? It turns out that two or three days ago, it was super cool in the morning. I don't know if you guys got that front that we got out here. Yes, there was a cool front that did come through town. It was crazy. Yeah, but, you know, it heated right back up. But it looks Uh, like this rain that's coming is actually going to cool things down. So you you think it will, Good news in store. Just a bit. You know? I, I, I hope so. But you know, Shannon, uh, how do you like our current political climate? It is a mess. <laughs> uh, Monday was a trip. I enjoyed that a little too much. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all I want to say. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> when all the news was rolling in, I just kind of freaked out. You know, but the thing about it is that it, it, it is sort of something that's been happening on a daily basis. It it's is. Not, it's you know, daily doses of political yeah. disbelief. I can't believe it. You know? Yeah. What is? What are we going to do? You just have to stay tuned for but, the next episode <laughs> of the soap opera. <laughs> that is so sad, though. That is so sad. But we're going to have a great show today. As soon as I pull it up, it's going to be... We actually have a special guest today, folks. And let me tell you one thing. Um, the, the name of the person is Eleanor Goldsfield. Uh, and... She's going to recount a pretty story, assuming that we get her. I know that she was flying around town, I mean, flying around the country, and she was going to try to get in just in time to make it. So we hope that we are going to be able to reach her. But in the meantime, you know, we always have a show, and more than having a show, we have a hell of an audience. So just be prepared for a good one. Anyway, folks, the title of the show today is called Political Activists. Eleanor Goldfield, Cancer, Millennials, and Single Pair. Again, the title of the show, Cancer, uh, Cancer Millennials, and Single Pair. Anyhow, here, what, what is it about? Over the last few weeks, we have been discussing the Affordable Care Act and health care in America. In sort, it, you know, the way we've been doing it, however, it's been in a sort of very antiseptic kind of a manner. But today we are going to discuss it first as personalized, you know, I'm going to sort of personalize it with uh, my my friend and political activist named uh, Eleanor Goldfield. Goldfield. And if we can reach her, because I know she was flying across country and, you know, with all the weather that we have right now, that can be problematic. But we'll see what happens if she gets here. Anyway, she has worked within the current system. She had an upfront seat from her cancer diagnosis to her remission over the last two years. We will then discuss the changes we must fight to make our system better and humane, make our system much better than it is in humane. Eleanor Goldfield is the founder of ho- and host of Act Out, founder of se- and senior consultant at Art Killing Apathy, and founder, singer, writer, at Rooftop Revolutionaries. She is an all-around social justice, economic justice, and racial justice political activist. Eleanor is not letting her ordeal deter her from her activism. After all, in the times of Trump, one cannot rest on one's laurels. She has written a new book titled 
Paradigm Lost. Eleanor blogs at artkillingapathy.com. But right now, uh, Shannon just told me that we're still getting to her voicemail. So what we're going to do is start with the program. We're going to go into the blog of the week and we're going to continue. Anyhow, before I get to the program, I want to remind all of our listeners that KPFT is a bastion of intelligent voices and programs. As a political activist myself, my favorites are The Monitor with Mark Babawi. We That's have every Monday at 7 p.m. Then we have Think Wing Radio with Mike Honig. That's also on Mondays at 9 p.m. And of course, there's Partisan Gridlock with Jeff Berg every Friday at 3 p.m. And we have Open Journal with Bradley. Yes, that's every weekday morning at 8 a.m. At 8 a.m. And then we have Jazz Latino, Afro-Cuban Latin Jazz as its best hosted by Juan Flores. That is every Monday at 10 p.m. Love that show. And then we have The Human Condition at 3 p.m. Followed by The Free Minstrel Show with Don and Dwayne at 4 p.m. on Fridays on the KPFT HD3 side. And there are so many programs over there yes. that would probably tickle your fancy. Check them out sometime. I think that's a problem that we don't advertise enough of HD, the HD3 channels, which has a whole lot of other programs as well. Yes, there's everything from custom-built radio um, that's all about rebuilding cars and, right. and car, just everything to do with cars. And there's so many other really fantastic programs. I mean, tune in on Monday nights around 7 and you'll hear some amazing Latino music. Absolutely. So we have to cross promote these different programs on these different networks that we have here. But folks, check out our schedule at kpft.org where you can find programming from music to politics to medicine to the eclectic. KPFT is listener supported radio community radio station. So please remember that if you like what you hear, visit kpft.org and ensure we remain a strong, viable community radio station that provides news, programming, and information not influenced by the corporatocracy. This is KPFT 90.1 FM in Houston, Texas. We want to hear your voice. We want to hear your thoughts. We want to hear from you. Don't forget, this is a call-in show, 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. Whether we get our our guest on, on the phone or not, we are going to have a good show because, again, she told me that she may be iffy because she is traveling, and you know how those airlines are. Sometimes you make it. Sometimes you're off time. But anyhow, folks, do you know what time is? It is. It's time for the weekly blog. Okay, I'm still trying to get her. Okay, folks. The name of the the blog of the week is called the following. Cancer could not stop her activism, but Trump's ACA repeal could kill her. And one thing I have to make sure and provide before I get started is to make sure that my listeners on Facebook Live can actually hear the show. So, here we go. I think I fixed that, uh, Phil Caskill. Here it goes. While the health healthcare debate may seem to be about something that affects just over 10% of the population, the reality is different. The problem is that by the time one realizes that fact, it may be too late. Most Americans get their health insurance through their employer, Medicare or traditional Medicaid. There is a large percentage of Americans who are forced to purchase insurance on the individual health insurance market. The Affordable Care Act, aka Obamacare, exchanges made these insurance policies worth the paper they were written on and to many an affordable alternative when coupled with the Medicaid expansion states who cared about their citizens accepted that particular program. Since coming into office, Donald Trump and his administration have been sabotaging the Affordable Care Act. They cut advertising and outreach aimed at encouraging people to sign up for Obamacare. Trump continues to threaten cost-sharing payments to insure into insurance companies, which will increase premiums by over 20%. The Medicaid cuts most in the Republican Party are pushing will kill many. Again, I state, will kill many. 
and guess where most of those people, a large percentage of those people live? In red states. These are, there are, and by the way, Texas is one of the largest culprits. There was just a study that came out that said, Texas, healthcare-wise, getting healthcare in, in Texas is worse than in any other state in the country, including the District of Columbia. So it's ranked 51st in getting health care to its citizens. Since coming into office, Donald Kerr has done a lot of damage. There are several reasons the health care debate remains unresolved in America. The first is the sea of corporately driven misinformation designed to mislead Americans into supporting a system that further puts them in debt and transfers their disposable income to insurance companies, drug companies, and other stakeholders in the healthcare industry. The second reason is our inability to get personalized stories, enough exposure. One, the problems with, or rather, one of the problems with the healthcare is that most of the times is one's life. It is, isn't something used or being thought of often. Have a minute, I'll get her. But, but no one knows when they will get a chronic disease or will get into an accident. When one is forced to view their vulnerability or even their mortality through someone that they can identify with, it becomes a lot more real. A whole lot more real. I met Eleanor Goldfield a few years ago at a Move to a Men conference in Washington, D.C. We were in the same empty conference room. She's a well-known activist in progressive circles. Goldfield was setting up to interview a few members of the organization for Free Speech TV. She got my attention when I overheard her converse or, or conversation discussing white privilege with another white person. It was like she was echoing an interesting article I had read at the Huffington Post many years past. I knew then she was more than your weekend activist shouting out politically correct slogans. I interviewed her that very night. What I did not know then was that Eleanor, a young millennial, was going through a health ordeal. She was amiable and at the same time hard-hidden about her political system, income and wealth inequality, racial, social, and criminal justice, and the environment. Eleanor had recently been diagnosed with cancer. No one had a clue. I was out there and hadn't a clue that this young lady was ill. As I was reading my Facebook thread just, like, just last week, while at the airport in Washington, D.C., I saw the following post from Eleanor. And it said as follows. I always want, this is her speaking. I always wanted long hair, still do. But then cancer says, and she used the explicative, you're long hair. I say, explicative cancer, and also I'll take a badass jagged new do from Cody Farrow. Note, I'm in remission so you guys don't need to panic. You'll all be stuck with me for quite a long while yet. That was her message on Facebook. Suffice it to say, it kind of shocked me because, like I said, the year before I was out there interviewing her in Washington, D.C., and she was interviewing others, and everything seemed perfectly fine. Looks are deceiving. A few days later, I sent her a message in an attempt to find out what was going on. I told her that I thought many would, be, many would benefit from her telling her story about her experience. After all, as a member of the Invincible Generation, her story would help in many ways. It would cauterize in the psyche of many, especially millennials, that they are not immune to illness in their young years. It would make it urgent the participation of many on the sidelines into the health debate. It would change the myth of who benefits from Medicaid. Folks, Eleanor pointed out many of the flaws in our healthcare system in an interview that I gave her just two days ago on, on Skype. She is on Medicaid saying in her parlance, look, there is not a lot of money in trying to save the world. That's why she says she has to be on it. She did not do well with chemotherapy. It made her feel that instead of killing her cancer, it was killing her. Alexa. It was killing her. Anyhow, worse, it was not working. She chose an alternative treatment. Even though that treatment put her in remission, she has to pay it out of pocket because it was not a drug company sanctioned treatment.
Goldfield said that the current health care debate and the possibility of losing Medicaid are stressful. She would not be able to cover her monthly and sometimes weekly visits to her doctor. She said her oncologist made her fill out a stress diary, given that stress can increase the growth of cancer cells. Eleanor is not letting her ordeal deter her from her activism. After all, in the times of Trump, one cannot rest on their laurels. She has written the new book titled Paradigm Lost. She describes it as follows, politically, or rather political poetry intertwined with powerful activist art. We have adapted, this is her words, we have adapted to greed, consumerism, hate, injustice, war, destruction, and sociopathy. Adaptation has kept us alive for millennia, and now it is killing us. We need a shift, a 99% lift. We need to lose the view that things are inherently awful and we can't do anything about it. We need to stop manufacturing consent and start manufacturing dissent by the boatload. Ship it out like Amazon knickknacks from sea to shining sea and back again. We need hope without optimism. We need to feel inspired art can, poetry can. Inspired art can, poetry can. Through our emotions, building the notions that we can do something. Folks, she has a whole lot of those kinds of words on her blog. Check her out at artkillin.com apathy.com that is art killing apathy.com when americans young old and from every socioeconomic background realize that they could find themselves at the sucker's end of our healthcare system they will supersede the will of the medical industrial complex another wealth thieving arm of the plutocracy and force the only practical the only practical solution to our health care problem, single payer Medicare for all. Folks, the telephone number is 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. We have not been able to reach uh, Eleanor. Again, she's at the airport somewhere or likely in the sky. I don't know because, again, she was flying and was going to try to make it in time when she got to L.A. to be here. But we have a whole lot to talk about, both about um, Obamacare, about what's going on right now. So, folks, let's get busy. 713-526-5738. Again, 713. All lines are open. I guess you were waiting to hear from Eleanor. She's not going to be here at this time. We'll try to reach her a little bit later. But, folks, again, that number, 713-526-5738. While I wait for the first call, I want to remind everybody as far as what's going on in the country today with health care. Let me tell you, Donald Trump now has finally become the president that very few people are listening to. Why? They've finally realized that the man is weak. He claimed, he told them that there will be no, that they should not leave the city. They should not leave Washington, D.C. if they didn't pass a bill. And guess what? They didn't pass a bill. You know why they didn't pass a bill? Because of all of you guys who prevented them from passing a bill. Our revolution, kudos to you. Indivisible Houston. Indivisible Houston, indivisible around the country. You did it. You are the one that made sure that nobody got a chance to feel the pain that would have been inflicted by re the Republican Congress De determined, determined to provide, to take your health care away, to take your Medicaid away, to take your, your health away in order to provide another tax cut to a whole bunch of people that didn't earn it, to a whole bunch of people that didn't deserve it, to a whole bunch of people otherwise. So you did your job. Uh, it seems like we have a few calls coming in right now. So uh, let's go ahead and go to line numero uno. I think I, Shannon is taking that, that call right now. Um, so therefore, folks, let me just forewarn you again. What, what, what's occurring in Washington is not occurring by accident. What's occurring in Washington is a direct result of the grassroots getting organized. It's a direct result of the, or, the organization being successful. 
the organization being successful. Let's go to line number one. Come on in, line number one. Who do I have the honor of speaking with? Patty, talk to me. Hello. You're on, Patty. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right. Well, um, it seems to me, and maybe I'm crazy, but it seems to me that we've been ruled by these same people for all time. In the past, they managed to work their way into, you know, the kings and the dictators. And they, they had no regard for human life. They had no regard for people, and they would kill people at the drop of a hat. Um, one of the reasons I, I think this way is a statement that I read a long time in a book called Johnny Got His Gun. And yes, ma'am. he was talking about people. And he's, I'll just paraphrase the best I can. People, irregardless as to who they are, what country they are in, what color their skin, what, na- what uh, religion they are, the vast majority of people just want a decent life. And that just always struck me, and I believe it to my core. So who is it, in general, who maneuvers and betrays and fights their way into these other positions where they can hoard money and they can hoard riches and they can abuse other people because they have no regard for anyone but themselves. Well, I mean, a lot of it has to do with greed, right? Uh, uh, and they want they, they want so much more than everybody else. Absolutely. But, you know, a, a lot of times that stuff is taught. Uh, in, in my opinion, I, I, I'm not a psychologist or anything like that. Right. But uh, I know, you know, you know how you feel. I know how I feel. It, it seems to me a whole lot of times uh, much of this is caused by greed. But it's also caused by a certain culture, right? A culture of, of thinking that you have to have that much more than somebody else to, 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 to validate who you are. And those are, those are the things that I think we have to get out of our, of, of, out of our system. That thing that says materi- that your worth is how, however much material things you have. And I mean, I think we were doing a pretty darn good, uh, I think we're doing a pretty darn good job of that for quite some time. I mean, all back in the 60s and 70s, I think an early Early 80s before, uh, well, I can't say early 80s, uh, Reagan came in 80. But before that, we were doing a good job of making people believe that they were worthy because they are. Right. Uh, making people realize that they are entitled to things. I mean, uh, it's amazing. I find it amazing that a whole lot of people look now at that word entitlement as a bad word, right? In other words, you are entitled to be a human. You're entitled that if you're in a society to be able to, to make... I mean, if you can't do better within a society than without a society, why have a society? That is the reason we have societies, right? To make things right. better for us all. Well, yeah, and, and our numbers of people require that we have a society. You know, in yes. the way back days, they didn't need that because right. they were so small. Now we've grown so much. But yeah, I mean, absolutely, it's greed, and whether it's, you're born that way, I'm, I don't know. Right. Uh, if, if you're born that way, or if it's only just learning, I don't know. But certainly there is this subset of people who only value what they can hoard, and I, I, I think they're hoarders, in the right. worst sense of the word. Yes. What they can hoard, what they can gather for themselves. And they have zero regard for anyone. I seriously doubt that Donald Trump even cares for his children in a real way, the way that most people care for their children. Well, we know that answer, right? I mean, remember, he didn't get into their lives until recently again. Right. I mean, so. And that's just as a reflection of him and what he's produced. Right. I mean, and, and I think a lot of that comes from how he was reared himself. Because, oh, absolutely. you know, the way he was, and, you know, and that is one of the reasons, you know, I give a lot of these folks the benefit of the doubt, right? In other words, we know that they're bad people, but, you know, you, you kind of try to figure out, well, how did they get bad? Why did, why are they bad? And a lot of times well, it's come to how, how they grew up. And the question is, can they be deprogrammed or not? Right. Well, I think there's another base problem that almost everybody has and that allows people to get away with a lot of stuff, and that is that everybody assumes, we all know what that word means, Oh yes, <laughs> uh, that other people, everybody else thinks the same way I think. Right. And that is dangerous because they don't. 
that is so true. That is absolutely so true. We cannot assume that everybody thinks like us. And that's why we, we have to communicate. That is why communication is so important, Patty, right? Because right. you have to let that be known. I mean, there are a lot of times I would say certain things, and I, there are th- I won't go into detail here, but I've said certain things many times for years, not knowing that maybe other people didn't agree with the way I said it or what I was saying. And, you know, unless you know, you don't know. So you have to hope that we're in a society where, first of all, what I always tell people is you have to give people the benefit of being able to screw up. Uh, if you give people right, the well, benefit of being that. able to screw up, that means uh, if I if I tell you something that is offensive to you or whatever, and re- and you give me a good reason and why it's offensive to you, I can come to you and say, okay, I'm sorry, I won't do that with you anymore. Right, and exactly. I think that there's a whole lot of that that's missing within our society. Well, that's go ahead. There is, but there's one other thing that, and that is, um, another book I read. I have no idea what it was, but. This this character was thinking in terms of she was a thief, mm-hmm. and she was thinking in terms of you know if they let me get a, if they let me get away with it then that's their tough luck they're stupid they deserve what they get right that's not how most of us think right right most of us have a somewhat of a conscience now I'm sure hers was learned that way but irregardless what we have to start being aware of is how different many people think right and what we need to be aware of is that these people have zero regard. And I feel that a huge number of these people that are super wealthy are sociopaths. Well, actually, that, and they yes. really don't have a conscience. You're, look, uh, let me ask you something. I mean, and even some of the ones that we consider good people, right? And, and, and mm. other callers, I'm coming to you as well. But think about this, Aunt Patty. If, if you have several billion dollars, I mean, uh, look, it doesn't, it, don't you, if I had a billion dollars, I would first say there's no way I've contributed to society worth a billion dollars. Even if I invent, invented right. That's the true. best That's thing true. on earth, all my inventions came through society, right? In other Absolutely. words, everything that I've accomplished here in America, I've accomplished because of I built whatever I have built on the backs of all those who came before me, whether acknowledged well, or not. An example of that is Bill Gates. I read a thing not too long ago which showed that he actually ponied over, uh, you know, took an, somebody else's invention and expanded or changed it or whatever. It wasn't, he didn't build windows from the ground up. You know something? He ponied on top of somebody else. You're absolutely right. In fact, it was it was actually a, a little computer company in Seattle. Uh, wife and husband had a software company. They had a software. It wasn't called MS-DAS or anything like that. I forgot what the name of the product was. And he just took, he actually made the deal with IBM before he knew that he had the software. So, I mean, oh, wow. right. So, the, the truth of the matter is he didn't, he came aboard, again, he built his billions on the knowledge of other people. That's right. And Absolutely. Now, the good thing about Bill Gates is that he's given a whole lot back. Yes, he has. But, he has. But I think a better thing of Bill Gates would be to admit that, that, uh, that, that, that our, there's, a, there's a real flaw within our economy where he could have made the kind of money that he made. It's not from his work. No, it's not. And that's what well, I'm saying. Well, it, and it is a flaw. It is a flaw where, um, and I listen to Tom Hartman a lot, and that we have allowed the workers to be stiffed the way that they are and to not have pay raises and not really participate in the growth of, their, of the business that they're working in. Right. Absolutely. I mean, America could not, look, you know, people like to give, uh, uh, precedence or, or pre, uh, preeminence to the leaders of corporations. You know, these are the guys that are right. allowed to make hun- millions right. and hundreds of millions of dollars. They are nothing without the engineers. They are nothing without the teachers. Right. They are nothing without all these things. And in fact, most, many of them, many of the business class are pretty much deficient in being able to build anything useful for society other than being able to play into the capitalist game. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. You know, we, we have allowed ourselves to be indoctrinated into thinking that that stockbroker, that guy who runs the company, is somehow inherently better or, or more valuable than that person who can build a transistor, than that person who can build an LCD than that person who can do all these different things. The reality is they aren't. The reality no, is not. what they've learned very well is a, a, an economic system where they are able to abuse 
and use the work of others. It's that simple. I mean, it's hard. I mean, a lot of people don't like to hear that. But if you're in the business class, you should be saying thank you to the technical class. You should be saying thank you Absolutely. to the service class because those are the people that make things happen. Thank you so kindly for being with us, Patty. A, uh, okay. James, Gary, I'm coming to you next, but we have to go for a quick break. Folks, this is a call-in show, and we still have quite a few lines open. 713-526-5738. 713-526-5738. Thank you very much, Egberto. And good afternoon. Partly cloudy today, around 94 degrees. It feels like 102 with humidity around 50%. Um, 40% chance of scattered thunderstorms today. And that possibility for scattered thunderstorms throughout the greater Houston area will remain in the forecast through next Wednesday, according to the National Weather Service. Some of these storms may produce brief heavy rainfall, so keep your umbrella with you, folks. Uh, low tonight around 76 and mostly cloudy Friday with a high near 92. And let's take a brief look at our roadways. It's rather clear out there at the moment. A few slow going areas, including on the West Loop in both directions from Evergreen up to the Katy Freeway. A little slow going as well on the Katy Freeway inbound from Highway 6 over to around the uh, Edgerid- Eldridge area. And uh, slow as well on the Northwest Freeway outbound from West 34th out to the Fairbanks North Houston. That's what your Houston area weather and traffic. I'm Shannon McCurchy, and you're listening to KPFT Houston 90.1. Back to you, Egberto. Muchísimas gracias, hermanita. Anyway, for those of you who've been waiting to hear from Eleanor Goldfield, uh, she did warn me that she was going to be in the air, you know, flying, and that she thought her plane would get in just in time to make the show. But you know how that goes. Anyhow, let's go to línea número, n- número dos with James. Come on in, James. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Yes, sir. Hey, I want to... um point out a connection to Russia with Trump that a lot of people haven't really looked at that okay. we might need to look at. Um, he actually has a connection to scientist Nikola Tesla through his uncle, John uh, John Trump. Mm-hmm. And if you want to find out more about that, there's a feature-length film that you can watch on YouTube called The Greatest Story Never Told. Mm-hmm. It outlines that as well as his connections to uh, believe it or not, Adolf Hitler. Mm-hmm. Oh, so whoa. if you if you all want to check that out, the great story never. <laughs> Let me. Uh, hello, James. I'm here. Yeah. Let me ask you to do something. You, you know, our site have a uh, our site has that um thing for the show on on Facebook. Go ahead and drop that link in there so that our listeners can actually see that, okay? Oh, definitely. It's really good. The greatest story never told, guys. Yeah, that, that, you. you know, I mean, there, there's another, before I let you go, there's another uh, There's another news organization, I think it's out of Sweden or one of these countries, that actually did a complete expose that was linking, that actually had the fact-based information linking uh, Trump to not some pretty shady characters. And, and some of it has been reported by, uh, have been reported by the White Washington Post, it just doesn't get a whole lot of coverage in our mainstream media because sometimes you wonder about where their loyalties lie. Anything else you want to add before we go, James? Um, It's all on the Rothschilds, guys. The greatest story never told. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You have a great day. Okay, folks, please remember this is a call-in show and we have lines open, 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. Our special guest, we are unable to reach. We knew she was going to be flying. And with the kind of weather that we have, maybe we just missed that. Anyhow, let's go to línea número tres. Come on in, Gary. How you doing? Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. I have a couple of things. One is a question for you about health care. Um, yes. Is it possible, just a scenario, what would happen if, if the, uh, the age to sign up for Medicare was just eliminated? So that anybody can sign up, whatever whatever age you are, and change nothing else. You're a genius. You know something? Let me tell you what would happen, really. There, there, let, let me be frank with some answers here. Yeah. And it goes as follows. That would be a great solution, and that could be handled rapidly. Because all, would need, all we would need to do is scale up the Medicare computer systems, because everything else could stay the same, right? Yeah. That, that is the ideal situation. It but here, too simple. But no, it's not. But it is. That's the idea <laughs> with single payer. We want to it make is a complex, very, yeah. very simple. Our complexity in our healthcare system was designed to make a lot of other people money. Yeah. Remember that. Yeah. The only reason you need to have a 
healthcare system that's not single payer is to a whole, allow a whole lot of other people to make money. I can give the whole rundown of yeah. that, but before I go into the whole rundown of, of that, well, yeah. there's another difficult portion that we have to take into okay. account. I've, before I start, folks, we have lines open, 713-526-5738, 713-526-5738. Um, here's the deal. Remember, there are whole hundreds of thousands of people that work in the insurance industry. Yeah. There are hundreds of thousands of people that work in all these ancillary industry to support the fraud that we call healthcare. And we can't abandon a whole lot of people who fit within the design of a, of a failed system, who fit within the design of a fraud. So in the process of going to a single-payer system, a lot of people always talk about, oh, it's going to be higher taxes. It is not true. You will have higher tax. well, rather, higher taxes is true, but the totality of money spent within healthcare will fall. That's a mathematical certainty. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And the reason why is that all the other middlemen are yeah. removed. But here's the deal. What do we do with the large unemployment we're going to get in the, in the insurance industry? What do we get in the large unemployment that we're going to get from doctors' offices who will no longer need all those employees to process insurance claims? Yeah. There's a lot of people that are going to be out on the streets. Yeah. yeah. So you have to think in many different manners. Yeah. And th what my solution is for that is, in effect, I would like to go cold turkey, Medicare for all, make the medical system work for these people right away. And then we give stipends and help to those people who are going to be displaced for a certain amount of time to be reabsorbed into the economy at large. Yeah. But the yeah. thing about it is the people that should get absolutely nothing or those that have perpetrated this fraud on America, or those that have lied to Americans telling them that there was a need to have an insurance company to somehow mitigate risk. It's a lie. Yeah. The, the biggest risk pool is the entire American economy. Yeah, you make it as big as possible. You make it as big as possible, and then we get the true cost of health care. Yeah. You make the risk pool as large as yeah. possible, and you get the real cost of health care that is distributed appropriately. Anything yeah. else you want to add, Gary, well, before I go? I just had a real quick comment also uh, about just the chaos. I, I, I noticed an article by a, na a woman named Amy Hart, who is a reporter. Uh -huh. I'll just read it a quick title. The title is, Chaos Obscures Washington's Biggest Policy Change. And her bottom line is, an unrelenting barrage of chaotic news coming out of Washington is distracting from a quieter revolution a near-complete reversal of America's energy and environmental policies. She's so, absolutely right. While we're, while we're all distracted by uh, uh, Russia and health care and all the crazy chaos around that, in the background, energy and environment are do doing a 180 from what we thought was going to be since the 1970s. Gary, that is absolutely true, and I've written about that at Daily Coast. Yeah. In fact, the time that I... The couple of times that I wrote about that at Daily Coast, I was pretty much uh, sent to the cleaners because oh well, see, yeah, you're you're leading the charge. Well, you know what? It, it's interesting because what White they man. <laughs> I don't know, but what they what what they said was a following. They said hmm. we can we can chew gum and walk at the same time. But my contention is a lot of people can't chew gum and walk at the same time. Specifically, the media. Yeah. Watch the media. We have look. We have over four stations that are running news twenty four seven. How comes with 24 yeah. hours worth of news, you have to run the same thing exactly. over and over exactly. again? Doesn't that give you opportunities to open the door yeah. for yeah. story after story after story? Uh -huh. You know, th that's the reason I like to watch Discovery Channel and all uh, History Channel and all of these because you get tired of the, the circle, you know, I mean, over and over again. Now, yeah. it is true. It is true, however, that every half hour or, or, or hour, so you may get an inkling of a change, and that may be the change that you need to blog about that day. So you're, you're glued to the same channel trying to get back to that again. But thank you very much for well, calling. Well, here's my solution. Yes, sir. Is one, solution, not my, one solution is to take all the high-priced network and big-shot reporters that uh -huh. waste their time covering these White House quote-unquote press briefings right. and send in the interns, let the interns do that, and have these high-priced reporters go out there and do some real investigative reporting. You know, 
Gary, I like that idea because the, the, the news conference, the, the press conference in the White House is such ridiculous it's smoke spin. And mirrors. It's smoke, and mirrors. smoke and mirrors. You just yeah. need an intern to do that. Yeah, yeah, and they'd, they'd get some good on-the-job training at the same time. Exactly. Meanwhile, these high-priced reporters that have great skills, you know, go in, go after the real story, <laughs> dig. Gary, that's a great idea. Thank you very All much right, for man. calling, Thanks my friend. Keep up the good work. Thank you, sir. Let's go to John, antiseptic. Come on in, John. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm, it's more antiseptic talk. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, you know that what happened in California, right? Yes, uh, I do. They, they had two different uh, rates that, uh, that they wanted to put out. The, the, the California legislation mm -hmm. said that the rate that they would have to charge to have single payer would be 15% of all payroll taxes. Right. The University of Amherst said and this is backed by the, the nurses, said it would be 2.3%. Mm -hmm. A huge, huge difference. I mean, huge difference. Right. Okay, the 15% the from all the, the uh, research I've done is very comparable to the European rate. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, if you look at the, at, at the Swiss uh, government, they, they require that you pay, you're paid 8% of your salary, no matter how rich, no matter how poor you are. 8% right. goes to an insurance company, not to, not to a single payer mm -hmm. run by the government, but to an insurance company. Right. And so we're at 15% right now in California. Mm -hmm. uh, so my question to you mm -hmm. is, do you think that, that, that if that was put on a referendum, do you think that that would pass in California at 15%? No, no, not now at all. And let me tell you why it wouldn't pass. It wouldn't pass because of the way you explained it. And you're explain, you know, what you explained was accurate. But that's, that's not what really happens, right? Here, here's, here's how I think we have to start uh, explaining the single-payer issue. This is how we have to start. First of all, we, have to, we forget about individuals or what individual taxes are going to be. And we first ask... How much money is spent on administration? How much money is spent on all these other wasteful things that we get from having multiple insurance companies and multiple risk pools, etc.? And then that, after we extract all of that, we're going to come out with a figure as far as what healthcare really costs. Of course, there's, there's a plus or minus because there's some efficiencies that will be gained additionally. And I explained to that to the, to the to caller before, where I explained that doctor's offices are no longer going to be as expensive to run because half of your staff is probably going to be gone. But <clears throat> so, so we know medical care and all of that in the aggregate is going to be dropped down. Now, it's interesting to say that 15% of all wages will, be, uh, will actually need to be taxed. I believe that number. And, but let me tell you how that is split. That doesn't mean that the person making $50,000 a year is going to pay 15% for, uh, for health care at all. It means that the guy who is making $2 billion a year is going to pay probably 50% of that money in taxes, on, on, the, on the net profits in taxes, because it has to be progressive. The reality here is as follows. Like I explained to the, to the caller before, nobody is really, nobody did the work. We have, a, we have to first remove the indoctrination from Americans who believe that somehow the billionaires are worth the billions that they've made. We have to first get to that point, and that is one of my goals in life, to let them know that those multi-billionaires, those multi-millionaires who make $230 million to run an insurance company in a year, uh, you can correct my number, I think it's $23 million. I may have even increased it, but those, those people who made that money, they did not earn that money. That is stolen money. But uh, can I make a point here? Yes. I mean, you say it's stolen but I mean, if you go to their bank account, yes. I mean, you know, it's real. You know, no, I, I understand. It, it, it's as real. I am what not you're, disagreeing. What you're uh, saying, though, is essentially we need to change laws, obviously, yes. to to make to tax people more. Yes. And how do we change the law and, or, and change people to where they won't make these uh, uh, these enormous amounts of money? And here we come. That's where I'm. That's where that's where I'm heading to now. And the thing about it, the first. The first thing that we have to do, John, you know this as well as I do. We have to educate the masses. It's not about educating the politicians. It's about educating the masses. Because if you ask, if you ask the average person about uh, certain forms of capitalism, they will attack you because they were, they were 
indoctrinated to then call you for believing XYZ a socialist, right? So the idea is a soft teaching, and that is what I try to do with a whole lot of the things that I do. It's a soft teaching. It's not over your head teaching or educating. It's first making sure that folks do realize that they're worth just as much as that person making $23 million and that we need to pass those laws to prevent that occurrence, those sort of things from occurring. And there are ways to do it, right? We know that there are ways to do it. Now, secondly, when it comes to how do we teach people about single parent, how much it costs, we then start sending the information that tells them to follow, the following. How much are each, every family paying in healthcare costs right now? And how much percentage of their wages does it represent and after we we teach them to do their own arithmetic and notice that say well suppose you had one payment and you never had to worry about medicine you never had to worry about what uh, when you go to the doctor it's going to cost xyz and and you slowly bring them along and the other thing we have to do is use examples it is imperative that you know i, I talk a lot about personalization um Nobody gets a chance to hear from the Canadian or these other people who, are, who will never come to the United States for what we have. Never. They don't hear it because our corporate driven, corporately driven media and etc., they won't give those stories a whole lot of play. Yes, we can find it, but it's not going to get a whole lot of mass play to make vast majority of Americans start thinking, oh my God. I am seeing that. Why do you think we have issues like net neutrality to worry about? Because as we get more educated, we'll get there. So, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying about, you know, how much it's going to cost in taxes or whatever. Right. No, I'm, can, I, can I make a point? It, it's not just the taxes. I mean, in, in, you know, I, again, I want to say that I am, I am forced to I know, I know you are. I'm willing to pay that 15%. I know you are. Uh, you know, and, it, and that, it, it's also in addition to whatever the tax rate yes. you were in before. And so the way they set it up, it, it, it is a flat 15% rate. And so right. you, you'd like to change that. No I understand way. that no also. Way. Yes. But, I mean, the way it's set up now, it is at that rate. But, but I mean, we also have, you know, we're going to have to do battle with the, not only with the insurance companies, with the hospitals, yes. with the doctors, uh, with with. Uh, the pharmaceutical companies. This is going to be a, a battle royale. Yes. And uh, and so, like you know, this is not going to be something that's easy. And that's why I like to talk about this. I, I mean, a lot of people just talk about sure right. single payer is the answer because it. It's you know solves the moral dilemma. Everybody should have health care. I agree with that. I agree with that. Now let's go to the next step. The next step is who's preventing us from having this, and how much is this going to cost, and how how are we going to win against our political opponents? And I just see very few people. Like there was an article by Joshua Holland, and I disagree with him because he's saying that it's it's too difficult to go to single payer. But I mean, I disagree with him. But he's very good at it putting up here's the people that are going to be you know who are going to be against it you know and uh and so you know i i just think that this is a big a big battle and that we should we should be uh aware of what what the, the stakes are now look i don't agree with i mean i i, I mean i not I, I do agree with you that it's going to be a big battle you know it's there's no way that it wasn't going to be a big battle and uh and it's a battle that i think we have to have we have to have that battle i mean the reality is um y you know these people are not going to give up this th this theft easily they're not going to give up that loot easily it won't happen we have to make it happen and that's why i talk about the masses my thing here is i forget about politicians a whole lot of times i want to start talking about educating people and once we get there john once we can start doing that right once we educate folks, that's what it's all about. But, John, I have like three other calls on the line that I got to go, but thank you for always giving us some insightful information, my friend. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's go to line number two. Sabrina. Hello, Egberto. How are you? All right. Wonderful show. Wonderful Talk to show. me, my friend. Talk to me. All right. Well, I just want to say that, you know, uh, in reference to what John was saying, you know, oh, this is going to be a lot of money. How mm -hmm. are we going to battle? How are we going to do this battle? I think that what we need to do is start educating people about the 2018 right. elections, the midterm elections. We need to vote these people out of office that we're voting for 
repeal. Right. I mean, that's the most important thing. I agree with you wholeheartedly, and I think we also need to make sure and uh, and make sure that it's progressives that don't have strong corporate ties that are going to be replacing those that are in there now. So, I mean, uh, you know, it, you know, because a lot, a lot of, you know, I have some friends that they want to do this outside of the political domain altogether, and what I tell them is, no, you have to do it within the political domain, because okay. uh, not doing it within the political domain means something like a revolution, and the truth of the matter is I don't think we need a revolution. I think we. I don't think we need. I think we need a mental revolution, if you know what I mean, Sabrina. Oh, right. Well, an individual revolution. An a individual revolution. revolution. The way that we're thinking, you know, just like you were saying earlier, uh, a couple of callers ago, you know, hey, we need to educate ourselves. We need to empower ourselves. We need to galvanize the movement within ourselves. Break in just a little bit. So uh, let her finish her to thought. say hey and point the finger where it needs to be pointed. Absolutely. These politicians, you know, these paid politicians, you know, these these corporate, you know automatons who are just, you know, doing what they're told and not listening to their constituents, we put those people there, and we got to take them out. Absolutely. So we have to take them out. But, Sabrina, I'm at a hard break, and then okay. it's, it's, uh, thank you very much for calling. And you, you stay with Absolutely. the program, my friend. Absolutely. Will do. Thank take you. Take care now. Bye-bye. Okay. Muchísimas gracias. All right, thank you, and good afternoon once again. Partly cloudy and 94 degrees. It feels like 102 out there with Houston humidity around 50%, and uh, about 40% chance of scattered thunderstorms throughout the greater Houston area. A few of these showers are north and east on the east side of town right now, and one shower over downtown at this moment. And that possibility for scattered thunderstorms will remain in the forecast through next Wednesday, according to the National Weather Service. So be prepared. It's going to be wet out there for a while. Uh, some of these storms may produce brief heavy rainfall. And uh, tonight, expect a low around 76, so that's a little nice and cool-ish. Um, partly cloudy Friday with a high near 92, and expect those storms to possibly occur after 8 a.m. And let's take a brief look at our roadways, just a few slow-going areas around town. A course on the West Loop in both directions from around Fornis up to um, Post Oak area and that extends northbound over to Irvington. There's an accident on the East Freeway outbound at Holland that's affecting the left lane and shoulder just beginning to back up traffic in that area and slow going on the Northwest Freeway outbound from around Pinemont out to Senate. Slow going as well on the North Freeway outbound from Telephone to Tidwell and of course as always this time of day it's backed up on the Southwest Freeway inbound from Westland over to 45. That's a look your Houston area weather and traffic. I'm Shannon McCurchy, and you're listening to Politics Done Right, only on KPFT. Back to you, Egberto. Muchísimas gracias, hermanita. Let's go to number two. John, come on in. John, you're Hello. on. Hello, Egberto. This is John Garcia from Venezuela. John Garcia de Venezuela. Habla, mi hermano. Well, very good. Uh, very interesting, the topic on the health care. I, I just wanted to add on your... Uh, like teaching or educating the public about the health care. Yes, sir. That an easy way is just to compare the prices or the cost with another first world country as in Europe, Spain, or Germany. Uh, just three years ago, I was one year in Spain, and I, I could experience the public service because my wife is from Spain, and she had free health, but we also had a private insurance that it was actually very accessible, and all the services were high quality. One, I, I could compare because my wife needs a, a medicine that from the same international company, here is 10 times more expensive than in Europe. And it is the same company, the same medicine. So the, the first step, you know, you can handle how to pay the health. But the first step is that here is too expensive, way too expensive, the same high-quality health care than in Europe, for example. 
You're absolutely right, John, and you're right that we have to show those comparisons. But you know, showing those comparisons not easy because the main, the media itself will will do one story and then forget about it for another month or two or three months, and then they'll do another story. It requires the, your testimonial. The testimonial that you just gave is a very important testimonial. And if more of us were given these testimonials throughout the internet, throughout our spheres of influence, throughout our family members, throughout our friends then people would get it but what we have having a whole lot of times is you have that experience and everybody who goes over to Europe and other places and have their own personal experience they haven't spent the time to do what you've just done here so first of all I want to thank you for giving that testimonial for all those that are listening to us right now to, to have heard and you keep up the good work as well my friend you are part of the solution okay yes. Egberto, and just one point uh, about Venezuela, uh -huh. uh, you know, we are very concerned to, about what's going on in our country these yes. days. Yes. And, and also a kind of shock uh, with some opinions that I hear in the radio, even in this same station. Uh -huh. last, last Thursday, there, there was another person that I respect a lot, the, the freedom of communication. Right. But they, they were saying that the government in Venezuela is legitimate and that there, there is only a few. I tell you, John. Uh, I would like. I only have a few seconds, John, but I want. I want to have a program talking about Venezuela pros and cons, and I'd love to have you talk about some and maybe educate some of us. I mean, I would love for you to drop me a line. It's easy to find me. Go to egbertowillis.com and drop me a line so we can be in touch. Okay, but I got. I have two minutes left, and I have two more callers. Okay. I, I will do it. I will do it. Thank you, Alberto. Thank Perfect. you so kindly, sir. Okay, let's okay. go to Johnny real quick. Johnny, I only can give you about 30 seconds or so, Johnny. Talk to me, brother. That's all I need. A correction to the other caller, John, not from Venezuela, the earlier one, the regular John that yes, called sir. in. Yes, uh -huh. sir. He makes it sound like we're fighting this battle all by ourselves. Doctors, insurance companies, blah, blah, blah. We've got 144,000 physicians who are members of PNHP. That is true. I believe it's 144,000. I might be wrong since I might be it's a lot. from dyslexia right it's now. It's a lot. So you might do some number checking for next week. Great. It's a considerable number of doctors who are members of Physicians for National Health Care Program. We're not alone. And with an attitude like that, with all due respect, John, we were sure to lose. I tell you I what, John. It's hard, especially uh, with Trump in the White hey, House. Hey, Johnny. God forbid. Johnny, John is a good guy. Johnny, he really God wants. Keep, uh, try to keep positive. All right, buddy. You have a great day. John is a, John is a good guy. Okay, let's go to number. Thank you very much for listening to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. You can personally reach me by sending an email to egberto at politicsdoneright.com. Remember, Egberto is spelled E-G-B-E-R-T-O. Change starts with you. 90.1 KPFT gives you information not tainted by corporate interest. Please visit kpft.org and contribute. Let's ensure continued access to real information and news remain available to all. Again, thank you very much for listening to Politics Done Right.